Thank you, kiddos. That was awesome. Y'all, there's nothing more amazing, I think, than whenever, as a mama, your kiddos worship. On Mother's Day, you get to be a recipient of their worship to the King of Glory. So happy Sunday and happy Mother's Day to y'all. All right, so listen. One of my sons, who shall remain anonymous, a few years back, he asked me that dreaded question. He said, Mama, where do I come from? Now, if you don't know this about me, you need to know that I am a fully transparent, no frills, no nonsense type of mom. Listen, I call things as though they are. This thing is an arm. Those things at the end of your feet, they're not tootsies, they're toes. And the thing that sits on top of your shoulder, shoulders, it is not a noggin, it is a head. So growing up with me as a mom, they learned the real names of our private parts. Not the cutesy cutesy ones, which I won't say right now since this is live. So although I'm not one to shy away from hard questions, I was a bit thrown off at the moment. I was a little bit off guard. But I decided that if they were going to ask me if that son was curious, that they should hear first from me. So I started off with the Garden of Eden and how God made male and female. I took them through conception and God's miraculous design. You know, I wasn't explicit, but I made sure that my son knew and understood what I was trying to tell him. I made sure he got a thorough answer because I wanted him to learn these things from me. Well... When I got to the end of my speech, my son looked up at me and he said, well, that's great, mommy. But you know, my friend Jason, he's from California and I just wanted to know where I am from. All right, so to be clear, that's not a true story. That is a joke that I found. But what I wanted to point out is that motherhood can sometimes be sticky, tricky, and complicated. So before we get too far in this message, guys, listen, I know that this is primarily a Mother's Day message, but this mother, this message is for everyone, regardless of whether you are male or female. So please don't check out. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles, we're going to be in Judges chapter 4 today. This is going to be from the New Living Translation. Again, Judges 4. Judges is the seventh book of the Bible. You begin with Genesis, then Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and you land on Judges. If you've hit the Kings, the Samuels, and the Chronicles, you've gone too far, turn back to your left. The title of my message today is When Mamas Get Up and Daughters Arise. From Judges chapter 4, we'll be focusing on the judge and prophetess Deborah. But before we dive in, I would like to give you a little bit of history so that you can understand where historically this story comes from. The time of Judges brought about great apostasy in Israel. I didn't know what the word apostasy is, and you may not either. So let me tell you, apostasy comes from the Greek word apostasia, which means defection, departure, revolt, or rebellion. The nation underwent political and religious turmoil, turmoil as the people tried to possess the parts of the land they had not fully conquered. The tribes fought among themselves as well, nearly wiping out the tribes of Manasseh and Benjamin. There was a pattern of behavior that was very clear in the book of Judges. The people would rebel through idolatry and disbelief. God brought in judgment through foreign oppression. God would raise up a deliverer, a judge, and the people repented and they would turn back to God. Then they, they would fall back into the cycle and the vicious cycle would start over and over and over again. The primary message of the book of Judges is that God will not allow sin to go unpunished. In the book of Exodus, it established that Israel was God's people and he was their king. So in Judges, God disciplined the Israelites for following other gods, for disobeying his sacrificial laws, for engaging in blatant immorality, and for descending into anarchy at times. Yet, yet, because he was their people, he listened to their cries for help, and he raised up leaders to deliver them. Unfortunately, though, even these godly individuals did not wield sufficient uh, influence to change the nation's direction. So the Israelites are in this vicious cycle of sin, repentance, returning back to God, followed by sin, repentance, and turning back to God. And where this story lands, we are in the sin part of that cycle. As I read Deborah's story from Judges chapter 4, I encourage you to use your holy, sanctified imagination. See if you can find yourself or someone you know in this story. And remember, please, guys and even gals, if you're not even a mother, please don't get disconnected. You can find yourself in this. 
Get yourselves ready to be activated. Buckle your seatbelts because I'm about to charge you into action. Judges chapter 4, beginning in verse 1 from the New Living Translation, says this. After Ehud's death, the Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord turned them over to King Jabin, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites would go to her for judgment. Now let's pause here for a second because there is something that we really don't want to miss. Let me explain a few things. Palm tree here could also be mean, could mean a post. And you see a palm tree, it signifies victory, strength, and peace. Rama means a height or high place. It can also mean a fortified city. And Bethel means a house of God. So what verse 5 is saying here is that Deborah would sit at her post underneath the shade of victory, strength, and peace in between a fortified city and the house of God. And people would come to her and she would judge, decide, and settle disputes. Let's continue on verse 6. It says, one day she sent for Barak. She said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out your 10,000 warriors, and I will call out Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors. There I will give you victory over him. Barak said to her, I will go, but only if you go with me. And what did she respond? She said, okay, very well, I'll go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of of a woman. So Deborah arose and went with Barak. Let's jump to verse 12. When Sisera was told that Barak had gone up to Mount Tabor, he called all of his 900 iron chariots and all of his warriors. Then Deborah said to Barak, get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his 10,000 warriors into battle. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all of his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leaped down from his chariot and he escaped on foot. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy army, killing all of Sisera's army of warriors. Listen to this. It says, not a single one of them was left alive. Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of, the, of Heber the Kenite, because Heber's family was on friendly terms with King Jabin. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, come into my tent, sir, come in, don't be afraid. So he went into her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. Please give me some water, he said, I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anyone comes and asks you if anyone is there, say no. But, but when Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, Jael crept quietly up to him with a hammer in one hand and a tent peg in the other. And she drove that tent peg through his temple into the ground, and so he died. When Barak came looking for Sisera, Jael went out to meet him, and she said, Come, and I will show you the man you were looking for. So he followed her into the tent and found Sisera lying there dead with the tent peg through his temple. So on that day, Israel saw God defeat Jabin, the Canaanite king. And from that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger against King Jabin until they finally destroyed him. So let's continue on in Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5 um, is entitled, The Victory Song of Deborah. And in this song, Deborah recounts the victory that was told in chapter 4. Beginning in verse 1, it says this, On that day, Deborah and Barak sang this song. Israel's leaders took charge, and the people gladly followed. Praise the Lord. Listen, you kings, pay attention, you mighty rulers, for I will sing to the Lord. I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. Let's jump down to verse 6. It says, In those days, people avoided the main roads, and travelers stayed on winding pathways. There was few people left in the villages of Israel. Now, once again, we need to pause because it's so important that we catch what's saying right here. What they're saying in scripture is that the main roads were so dangerous that people avoided them. They, they resorted to taking alternative routes just to get to where they were going. It was so dangerous that village life ceased to exist. Let's continue with verse 7. It says, until. Can you say until? Until. until. It says, until I... Deborah arose as a mother in Israel. 
is real. Now, whew, I don't know about you, but that just gets me excited because that itself will preach. Do you remember what the title of my sermon is today? It's when mamas get up and daughters arise. Let me ask you something. What happens when a mama gets up? When a mama gets up, they mean business. They ain't messing around any longer. Whatever playing around has been going on, it ain't going to happen anymore. You see, when mamas get up, everyone else better watch out, right? When a mama rises up in the house, when a mama gets an activation and her spirit, she'll say something like this. She'll be like, enough. Enough is enough. I'm not taking it anymore. There is no obstacle, no situation, and there's no demon in hell that's going to stop me, right? When she gets her face fixed like flint on the one who delivers perfect justice. When a mama rises up, there is nothing, nothing, not one single thing that can stop her or stand in her way. Well, listen to this. A demon might even say something like this. He might try to stop her and deter her. He might say, oh, really, mama? Well, you think you're real cute, huh? You know that son of yours who's been doing drugs for a long time? You ain't never going to get him back. Or they try to mess with her and say things like this. Oh, mama, you think you're real cute, huh? Well, that husband of yours, you know he's lousy. He's been sipping on that whiskey bottle for over a decade. I've seen you pray. Your praise aren't working. Or they might try to say something like this. They might try to sneer at her and threaten her and say, Oh, mama, you think you're so cute. You just better watch out. I'll take you out. I'll take out your home. I'll take out your livelihood. I'll take out your kids. I'll take out anything and everything that means anything to you. But listen. Suddenly, can you say suddenly? Suddenly, suddenly when a mama gets up, it does not matter how often the devil threatens her because his words can no longer have an effect on her. You see, when a mama rises up, it doesn't matter how many failed attempts she's seen, how many dreams have failed, how many dreams have died, no matter how many losses that she has sustained. When a mama gets a word from the Lord deep down inside of her, something unexplainable happens. A spark of courage, of perseverance, of tenacity, and of sheer determination and courage like never seen before starts to rise up inside of her. It comes and sets a flame and whoosh, like an uncontrollable forest fire, she cannot and will not be stopped until she has accomplished her mission. Nothing. There's not one single thing. Thing that can stop a mama when she knows what she's supposed to do. When mamas get up, the world stops and takes notice. Judges chapter 4 and chapter 5, they tell an epic tale, but I'd be stopping short if I didn't tell it all the way through. So let's look at chapter 5, verse 31. It says, Lord, may all your enemies die like Sisera, but may those who love you rise like the sun in all its power. And here it is. Then there was peace in the land for 40 years. There's six action statements that I want you to take away with you today from the story of Deborah. First, number one, be who you've been called to be. Deborah was called by God to be a prophetess and a judge. People came to her. A woman. People did not come to a woman during that time. People came to her, so she must have done her job well. It couldn't have been an easy job. I am absolutely positive that at times she lost friends and gained enemies. She didn't shy away, though, from the job. She didn't shy away from the, the, uh, the assignment that the Lord gave her. She obeyed him, and she fulfilled her call in life. Mamas, daughters, fathers, and sons, do not waste your time, your effort, and your energy on comparing yourself and measuring yourself with other people and their assignments. You, you, you are God's masterpiece, his greatest work. He designed you and created you in a unique, particular, and exclusive set of gifts. He has designed you with those that only you can fulfill. He has a specific, a specialized, a significant assignment on this earth, and you are the only one who can fulfill it. So be you. You can do it. Number two. Listen and respond. In her ruling and judging, Deborah, God spoke to Deborah. Deborah had her ear tuned to the frequency of heaven. When Deborah received a word from the Lord, she prophesied that word to Barak and with boldness and with confidence. When she delivered the word from the Lord, she did it in a straightforward manner. She didn't add to God's message, nor did she reduce it. She didn't soften it, nor did she sugarcoat it. 
Even when Barak was unwilling to man up and go out on the battlefield without her, right? What did she do? She stood firm in what God told her. She said, all right, no problem. But God says that the victory will not belong to you, but rather to a woman. Mamas, daughters, fathers, and sons, do not dilute the words that God gives you to speak. But be careful not to add your interpretation or your opinion to them. Listen, God says what he says because it's what he wants to say. Your job is to stand at your post, to crane your ear up to heaven, and to hear what he says and to release what he has given you to tell him to say. Number three, follow God, even into battle. In obedience, Deborah boldly followed the Lord, going into the battlefield with Barak. Mamas, daughters, fathers, and sons, you must have a word from the Lord because if you do, when you do have a word from the Lord, you can go anywhere. You can do anything, even go to the front lines in a crazy combat zone. When you get a word from the Lord, the taunts, the crazy, the terror, they will not fluster you. They will not shake you. What the enemy says, what he does, will not be able to penetrate through God's instructions, which act, which act as a shield over your heart and your soul. Number four, release timely words. Deborah heard and released to Barak the second word that the Lord gave her. Do you remember what it was? Attack now. Do you remember the result? Barak did what he was instructed, and he led his army into battle. And when they attacked, the Lord threw the enemy's army into a complete panic, and they killed every single one of them. Judges 4.16 says, not a single one of the enemy was left alive. Mamas, daughters, fathers, and sons, a timely heard and a timely released word from the Lord will not only throw your enemy into chaos, into panic, but it will enable you to destroy every single thing that comes against you or comes against your family. Number five, stand up and rise up. Deborah arose as a mother. The word arose is the Hebrew word kum. Can you say kum? Kum. It means to come on the scene or to appear. When you stop shrinking back, when you stop holding back, when you wake up and stand up and rise up, the world becomes a better, safer, fuller place. Mamas, daughters, fathers, and sons, you have a call on your life, and it is time for you to step into your destiny. Today is an excellent day to stop lingering in the past, to step into the present, and take hold of your future. Today is an excellent day to settle within yourself that God was speaking to you in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, when he said that God made Jesus, God made him who knew no sin to become sin so that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's an excellent day to agree with 1 John 4, 4, which says, greater is he, greater is he who is in me, who is in you than he who is in the world. Today is an excellent day to declare that what God did in Christ is greater, stronger, more excellent, more powerful, more worthy than anything you've ever done or anything that was ever done to you. Finally, number six, be you and peace will reign. Because there was peace in the land, or because Deborah, were, uh, because of Deborah, there was peace in the land. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mamas, daughters, fathers, and sons. Do not withhold your powerful life-giving words. Proverbs 18.21 tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So choose life. When you decide to release the kingdom of heaven here on earth, the result is that peace will fill the earth. So today is Mother's Day. Mamas come in all kinds of shapes, all kinds of sizes, all kinds of personalities. Some of them have a lot like me. <laughs> Some of you were birthed directly from your mother's womb, but then there's others of you who've been born in your mother's heart, either through adoption or maybe through a spiritual connection. For some of you, Mother's Day might be tough. Maybe you're like me, and time after time after time, you'd get pregnant, but then you'd lose the baby. Or maybe you've been wanting to be pregnant for a decade or longer and you just can't seem to get pregnant. Maybe you had a wonderful relationship with your mother or maybe quite the opposite. You know, not all of us are mothers, but every single one of us 
came from a mother. You may never birth a child, but you were called, you were destined to birth dreams and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and declare the good news to the world. Because you belong to the family of God, every single one of you is spectacular and rare. And rare things have incomprehensible significance and value. Today, as I close out, I just want to speak over you a mother's blessing. But before I do that, I want to take a moment to honor our mothers. They may have missed the mark at times. They may not have been perfect. They may not have been able to meet your every need. But if the only thing that they did was house you in their womb and birth you at the precise moment that God wanted you to enter this world, then that, if nothing else, is a cause for gratefulness. So we're going to take a moment to tell your mama that you love her and that you appreciate her. And if your mom is here with you, wherever you're at, you can bless her right there. But if your mom isn't there, maybe she's already passed on or maybe she lives in another state. There's really no distance in the spirit realm. You can still speak blessing and you can still thank her for what she did. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to do that. So now just get comfortable. However you receive, I just want you to receive. We, we live in a world where we give and we give and we give. And sometimes some of us aren't the best at receiving. And I just want to speak blessing over you. Moms have this ability. It just, even the ones that aren't very motherly, they just have this thing where we just want to comfort and we want to nurture and we want to encourage and we want to build up. And so that's what I want to do for you today. So today I bless you with strength and remind you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I bless you today to be brave and courageous as you face the challenges that are before you. For the Lord has commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or discouraged or afraid. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. I bless your hearts to be calm and peaceful as you go through the day as well as through the night watches for the scriptures declare that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I bless you to trust God to provide for you knowing that God will liberally supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I bless you to follow the direction of the Lord, the way he leads you, remembering to trust in the Lord and rely com confidently and completely on him with all your heart. Don't rely on your own insight or your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing all the obstacles that block your way. I bless you with the awareness of God's safety and protection. Even in this increasingly unsafe world, knowing that he will protect you from wickedness and harm, for he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. God is your refuge and strength in whom you can trust. I bless you with the kind of joy that can only come from God because in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. I bless, you with, to give, sorry, I bless you to show compassion to those in need. And that includes yourself. Can you say, that includes me? To those who have less than you do. And to be kind and helpful to one another. Tender-hearted, compassionate, and understanding. Forgiving one another readily and freely. Just as Christ forgave you. I bless you to grow in wisdom and understanding, to remember and know that you have the mind of Christ. I want you to, I bless you to embrace what is good and right, knowing that if you need wisdom, ask your generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. 
I bless you with the hope that comes from above, the kind that far exceeds what we have in the here and now. And I pray that God, the source of all hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then, then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And finally, I bless you to be filled with the love of God, that you will know how deeply that you are loved, and that love will overflow onto others. For love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. Love does not brag about one's achievements, nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place for shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love takes failure and defeat, for it never gives up. Love never stops loving. So today I just speak blessing and favor on you today. If you're a mom, happy Mother's Day. If you are a daughter or son, I just bless you to be everything that you were created to be. Nothing more, nothing less, perfectly perfect in every way. I bless you to know your identity, your value, and your worth. I bless you with radical, crazy, overwhelmingly abundant encounters with the love and the heart of the Father. I bless you to come face to face with him, to breathe in his love, to absorb his love. I bless your spirit, man, to rise up. When your flesh is screaming and everything is going crazy around you, I bless your spirit, man, to stand in that place. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You have access to him and you have access to everything that he has. For he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he doesn't withhold his love or affection from you. I bless those places in you that you've received um, pain and wounding and trauma. I bless those places to heal and to line up. I bless the, the places that your heart has been left back where those damage was to pull it forward into the present. And most of all, I just bless you with a lens to see things, see life, to see yourself, to see the people around you the way the Lord designed and created them. Y'all have a great day today, and we'll see you next week.